As you can tell by my hair, I've clearly recently been savaged by something. So today's video is going to be all about how I got my hair caught in a wood chipper. But in all seriousness, considering my little mishap in my NZXT H1 review, I decided to see how this little bad boy will perform instead of the AIO that it comes with. The really cool thing about the NZXT H1 is once you remove this 140 millimeter AIO from the case, there's actually quite a lot of clearance for air coolers in there. This Wraith Prism is actually quite a tall cooler, but as you can see here, it fits like a glove. And it means that you've got quite a big variety of options for low profile air coolers in this case. I did also test the Scythe Big Shuriken 3 in there, but that didn't go very well. It seems like it doesn't like an eight core 16 thread CPU, which very neatly brings me to the components I used for this video, which is an Asus X470i motherboard with a Ryzen 7 1700X that I initially overclocked to 3.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts, but spoiler alert, this, this couldn't handle that very well, so I had to lower that a bit later, but we'll get into that while we talk about the actual thermals. Uh, and then it's got 16 gigs of RAM in it and an RTX 2060 as well, a Zotac edition. And with that, let's get into how I actually did these tests. And for this video, I decided to be a real professional. The room was at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. When it comes to thermal paste, I used the same thermal paste for all of the tests. I even tried to get the same amount for each application, although I don't have a sensitive enough scale to actually weigh the thermal paste that I used. So yeah, that didn't happen. And then as far as software goes, I was using IDA64 stress test and I ran it for half an hour uh, just to make sure that all of the liquid in the AIO was nice and saturated like a professional. And then I was also running a stress test on the graphics card just so that we have maximum thermal saturation in the case to see how, how, how much of a difference that makes. And then I took a measurement of the T dye temperature of the CPU and also did a VRM temperature check just to see how the different cooling solutions affected the VRM temperatures. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, I did initially run the tests with the CPU at 3.8 gigahertz at 1.35 volts. And the AIO could manage this no problem at all. We were getting about 68 degrees Celsius on the CPU and the VRMs were sitting at about 65 C. Now, when I redid those tests with the little Wraith cooler, um, yeah, it just kind of shut down after two minutes of running. And I actually gradually lowered the voltages and the actual core frequency as it became unstable to a point where this cooler could actually manage. The maximum settings that this cooler could thermally deal with was 3.65 gigahertz at 1.3 volts. At these settings with the AIO, I was getting 60 degrees C on the CPU and 59 degrees C on the VRM. With this Wraith Prism cooler, I was getting 86 degrees Celsius and 78 degrees Celsius on the VRM. So as you can see, the AIO is performing significantly better. And then finally, when it comes to the little Scythe cooler, I couldn't get those settings to work and I had to drop them further because it seems to really struggle with an eight core 16 thread CPU. Now I ended up running it at 1.225 volts at about 3.5 gigahertz. And at these settings, I was getting 75C on the CPU and 65C on the VRM. Now at these settings, if I went any higher, the power draw on the CPU would pretty much double and then the Scythe cooler couldn't handle it anymore. So at 1.225 volts, we were getting about 60 watts of power draw on the CPU. And if I went higher than that, it jumped all the way up to like 130 watts. And then yeah, the cooler would, would fart out. When it comes to noise levels, considering how balls to the wall these tests are, all of the coolers were running at 100% fan speed and 100% AIO pump speed where relevant. Now at this point, they're all loud. Um, <laughs> I don't really have a way to test exactly the decibel difference between them. And I live essentially in an active construction site. So noise is a bit of an issue, but have a listen and tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. 
Bear in mind that all of these tests are worst case scenario. It's essentially bending the coolers over a table and having at them. And while gaming, you'll definitely have lower temperatures with the Wraith Prism, and you could probably push the core frequency higher. But bear in mind, the AIO is also gonna be much cooler. Now, while gaming at the same settings with 1.3 volts at a core frequency of about 3.65 gigahertz, I was getting 60C on the Wraith Prism. And then with the AIO, I was getting 45 degrees Celsius. So yeah, the 140 millimeter AIO in the NZXT H1 massively outperforms the air coolers that I have to test. So yeah, looking at the temperatures, it's pretty clear why NZXT made the decision that they did considering the form factor of this case. And I think it's great that you can drop high core count CPUs in here and not have to worry too much about exactly what voltage it's running at and what frequency because the cooler will probably be able to handle it. Especially with things like PBO, on uh, Ryzen 3000 CPUs, it means the cores will boost nice and high uh, in a way that it wouldn't be able to on an air cooler that will fit in the case. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check the comment section for all of the Garys. That's always very entertaining. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends. Uh, follow me on any social media I'll have linked below. And until the next video, bye-bye.